All right, I was working on a project and I went and grabbed my uh, my Alenco uh, resistance box. But I really I really enjoy this thing and uh, I get a lot of use out of it and everything. And then I uh, I wanted to have a higher load though. I think this is good for half a watt. I think it has half watt resistors in it. Uh, certainly no, no more than one watt. And I wanted a higher wattage box, but um, it doesn't need to be particular values and everything. I just needed a higher higher wattage box. And so I thought, well, I'll, let me build one. And so I've got these boxes that I built, uh, I bought. So I'm gonna use one of these, one of these boxes and I have a switch. I'll probably cut the shaft down. It's a little bit longer right now, but it's a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I think it's an 11 position switch. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna use the switch and uh, on the box I'll put some uh, banana jacks, which I have. So I have all this stuff, everything is free to build, right? And so I have a box full of power resistors. So if I, I even have a labeled power resistor. So I thought I'd go through the box and like pick out some, pick, pick out some values I like. Um, I've got some, uh, 100 ohms here. I think these are 10. Oh, these are 10 ohm. These are 10 ohm. I have big fat ones. These are, this one's 30 ohms. Lots of wattage. I figure out which, which wattage like, oh, remember I bought this one. Uh, what was this one? Uh, half an ohm with a big, big thing on it. Hmm. I think that might be too much. I got some of these type 0 .0, 0 0.05 ohms. This is great for measuring current and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll go through, here's uh, 30 ohms, 25 watts at 30 ohms. See, that would be a good, that might be a good value to have. But I think I want kind of like lower ohm stuff, like below, 100 ohms and below. Uh, so here's a one ohm, see this would be perfect. One ohm resistor at 20 watts, right? That'd be great. Uh, oh, and I bought these recently, I like these. Oh, here we go, 100 ohms at five watts. So maybe I'll start with one of those. Anyway, I'll figure out a, an assortment of, uh, of wattages to put in, or uh, ohmages to put in here, and different wattages and stuff, and and put some uh, put this on the front panel, and yeah, make a make a high wattage resistance box uh, to test things out on. So I think this will be fun. All right, I thought I would uh, put the put the. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, metal left here because there's a bunch of holes in it. So I don't want to make a new front plate. I always like to just reuse whatever, whatever I got. So I'm going to place this. Uh, I'm going to place this over here. There's a lot of meat right here. So I'll probably put this over here and then I can put the two knobs over here. So that was my first idea. Oops. Ah! It's on the ground now. That was my first idea. But then I thought, well, that's silly. I'll put I'll put these on the back. So I'll put the I'll put the banana jacks on the back and uh, keep this clean up here. So yeah, let me do that. All right, so I wanna lay this out pretty, so I'm gonna use some dicum, and we'll do a layout here on the back. And this is measuring halfway between, so that's not gonna look right. Let's do halfway between here. Yeah, let's do halfway, halfway between these two. So this is a uh, 1.23, 1.23 divided by two is 6.15. So you set your calipers to six, 6.15, close enough. So this is our, that's our center line. And then we need uh, 75.75 inches between centers, and then the banana jacks will, dual banana jacks will be on the right, on the right centers, okay? So what we will do is we will figure out where we want, where we want to center these things. Just kind of eyeball it. I think right about there is good. So we'll put one punch here. And then we will lay out the other side there. Always double check after you've made center punches, double check, because you can move, you can move center punches around. Let's see, these are a little bit, these are a little bit too 
far apart, okay? And you can angle your punch just a little bit, and you can move those, you can move those a little bit, believe it or not. Yeah, those are, those are good now. All right, so then we'll go back over it with a, with a heavy punch. That was a prick punch, and these are center punches, so those now should be exactly on, they are, they're perfect. There you go. So you can move, uh, can move things around even if you've punched it. So do a light, light punch first with a prick punch, get them to where you want them and then hit them hard with a uh, center punch. So those are ready to drill. This one's, this one's going to go right there. It's ready to drill. So uh, let's figure out how big a holes we need. Let's see for the bananas. These are going to be about 0.3. And this should be 3 eighths, I think. Yeah, 3 six, five, Yeah, 3 eighths. 3 eighths, and these are 0.3, so yeah, let's go drill them. All right. Let's see if our calculations were right. Hopefully, these will go in. Look at that. Machinist fit. Awesome. So in um, in America, there was a tool company called Crescent, and everybody calls these things crescent wrenches. This is made by the Diamond Company, so it's not a crescent if it's a, <laughs> made by Diamond. Um, but it's like Kleenex or you know Colas or Coke or whatever. There's certain brand names that people associate things with. So crescent wrenches were just this this type of this type of wrench. Um, I'm wondering if like my German viewers or somebody can say, you know, if they see one of these, what, what, what's it called, right? Or in England, right? Maybe there's a, maybe there's a particular brand that these first became, first became known as, right? And then everybody calls them that, even though that's not the manufacturer any longer. All right, there we go. Let's see if a, uh, uh, a double banana jack goes in there. Look at that perfect fit. So uh, yeah, three quarters of an inch is the correct size. Three quarters of an inch. That sounds familiar. I think that's the spacing of uh, piano keys to piano keys or no, keyboard on a uh, touch type. Uh, I believe it's three quarters of an inch also. Anyway, I digress. So this will go on the back, upside down. This will go on the back like that. That'll be, that'll be great. And uh, I just kind of eyeballed it to be more symmetric around those two notches right there just so it doesn't look weird. And then my front is going to be this, uh, this switch here, and I'm going to have to cut down this shaft as short as I can. So let me figure that out. Take the knob off here. I like this. I found. I was looking through my knobs of what would be appropriate. This one looks really old school, so I. I want to make it look a little old school. That one looks good. Okay, so let's see here. How much sticks out? I'm going to use my thumb as a depth gauge. And we have about that much we need, which is about 12 millimeters. Measure twice. About, right about 12 millimeters. So if we come here, Let's see, I need something to mark with. So I can do everything with three hands here. That well, looks about right. I marked it at uh, 13 millimeters, so we have a little bit to play with. All right, 
Let's, uh, I guess, hacksaw. All right. Hacksaw, this stuff's really soft. It's a nice, nice brass or something. That, uh, that cut off and uh, belt sander. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. Let's get this off here. That looks kind of nice. I'll put that on the front. There we go. Uh, let's see here. Where is the number? Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. I'll just, I'll just tighten this down. Where's my crescent wrench? And let's clock this thing. Okay. We need to come this way a little bit. Maybe there. Yeah, that's good. I'll leave it there. Lock down the other one. Awesome. I like it. I'll be up front. Cool. All right. Let's pick out some, uh, let's pick out some resistors here. Okay. I think I'm going to start out with these. Uh, we're going to start out with a hundred ohms. And then uh, I've built this before on camera. This is a 50 ohm load. So it's 200 ohms in, uh, in parallel. So I'll just steal that out of there. So we'll go from 100 to 50. This is 30. This is 10. I thought I'd put in 8 ohms just in case I do any speaker thing. This 25 watt 8 ohm. This is 1 ohm and this is 0.4 ohms. Okay. So those are the ones I'm going to put in there and uh, yeah, let's get it wired up. Okay. We're using some uh, 18 gauge wire. That should be plenty. Since it's a resistor, I don't think color coding's really necessary, but it's aesthetic for me to make them different colors, I guess. I don't know. Another thing is just use wire up. So if you have two rolls of wire that are different colors, use equal amounts of the two colors so that you don't end up with like no red and all black kind of thing, you know? Oh, I used up all my black wire and all I've got now is red wire and I have to use all my grounds with red and I don't know. Just thought. All right, I think I will put this at the back of the box, then I'll know how long things need to be. I think I'll have it pull out the, f let's see. No, that doesn't make any sense. Hmm. How should I do this? I need to figure out how to mount my resistors too. How do I mount my resistors? Maybe on a PC board just to hold them around. That might make sense. Just to have them mechanically mounted. Hmm. I don't know. Let me think about that. All right, I've kind of uh, got a little PC board here that slides into my box and uh, it's just one of those single sided jobbers. And so I'm going to, I super glued them on the board just to hold them. Nothing too exciting. Um, I'm just going to connect some ground so that there's going to be one side of the resistors that are all, that are all common. And uh, put a wire here. That's good. Uh, yeah, I'll just snip these off. All right. Yeah, and the little one goes across there. Let's make a little 
defending him. All right, so these now all have one, one lead over. Let's put in this 100 ohms. How will he fit in? Why don't we put him here? Bend him over. Look at a touch there. All right. Well, they can all support themselves. Right. And we have one left over. Where should we put him? Oh, I should have left that a little bit longer on that side. Or I could stick it under here. There we go. How about that one? Uh, that doesn't quite work. He kind of needs to go up. Kind of needs to go up. Bend this over. this up. There, how about that? Perfect. All right. All right. Now, this should slide into the box. Look at that. Oh, very, very nice. All right, should sell these things. Um, okay, let's see. Yep, everything is ready to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven values. Excellent. Seven values. And so we'll put the seven wires on this side. And put that on, have these seven wires come out to this side, and then it'll all, it'll all slide in, I think. It'll all just slide in from which side do I want? Hmm. Which side do I want it to slide into? I think it makes sense for this side, then uh, these seven wires will all be short. So I will kind of assemble it from this side, and then the whole thing will slide in, and then the long, long wires go in the back. Let's do it that way. All right, uh, I got it all wired up and I broke my rule. I used all orange wire except for one blue, one, uh, one brown wire. So anyway, <laughs> let's see here. Let's see if it all fits. Let's cut some of these long things off here. So nothing will, nothing will try to short out. All right, that doesn't look so bad. How about over here? That's a little bit long. That one's long, that one's long, yeah, that one's fine. All right, now it has to go in here. So a lot of times I'll wire these things up and I'll go, oh, I needed to only put in half because it has to get through the box. But I, I planned that ahead of time. I planned that this part would slide through and then this part will slide through. Put it on the rails here. All right, it's on the rails. That's sliding through. And so let's jam. There we go. There we go. And then this will go over here. Put some uh, put some screws in the front. Put my screwdriver away. Oh, I'm so clean. I put my screwdriver away. I'm going to put one screw in because I don't trust myself. Let's try it out. Let's uh, be f well, I'll put one more screw in. And then we will see how it measures. 
So if we actually get the homage, the homage that we expect. Yeah, close enough. All right. Um, all right, let's uh, let's stick a little, a couple little pieces of wire in here, so I can make, I can put clip leads on it, so I'm not fighting things. Put one there, that the clip lead is too. That's too short. Let's do this one here. All right, let's get a voltmeter ohms. Hook it up, ohms, and we're measuring 0.5 ohms. Okay. All right, is that all on camera? How's it looking? A little bit dark. Okay, let's go through its paces. There's the 0.5 ohms, one ohm, eight ohms, should be 10 ohms, that. 30, 50, yep, 48, okay. 100, perfect, and then open, right? Yeah, open. Awesome. I like it. All right, I'll put the rest of the screws in. There we go, project complete. I love it when I complete projects and I create something useful. This will, this will be useful. Um, I'll need to put a label on it so I can remember what these values are. Um, but uh, yeah, this is, gonna be, this is gonna be super handy. And if I actually burn up one of these resistors, I won't care because it's just a junk one and I can replace it easy. I know it's, I know it's mine and I can put something else in there. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I like it.